Hey, I'm Nico, and here are 30 useless facts you didn't know about Splatoon! Did you know that before Inklings and Squids were a thing, the game had different protagonists? According to an iwata Ask interview with the game developers, this game had different phases. The first prototype involved a bunch of tofu cubes spraying ink at each other. This one is referred to as the tofu prototype. And as you can see, well, it's a prototype for sure. The second phase involved a bunch of different creatures, including those rabbits. The idea behind it was that selling a game about rabbits was way easier than selling a game about tofu blocks, and I get that. The problem is that playtesters really didn't enjoy the rabbits that much. They asked a bunch of simple questions like, why would rabbits shoot ink at each other? Or why would they hide within the ink? Pretty reasonable questions if you ask me. This is where the squids came into play. Squids can shoot ink and they can swim in that ink, so it makes total sense. Well, here is what the first squids actually looked like. Hmm, they don't look so human. Yep, the first idea was to use squids all the time, but the team ended up preferring to create a new species that had a humanoid form and that can turn into a squid when it's time to hide in the ink. Pretty cool, eh? In between all those ideas, Nintendo even experimented with classic Nintendo characters, like Mario and Yoshi. Can you imagine? In 2015, between June and September, participating Yogurty and Yogan Fra's stores offered a Splatoon themed treat available in two flavors Squid Sickle and Ink Berry. Mmm, yummy! If you stand next to the Battle Dojo and you look inside of it, you'll be able to see a few Wii U controllers hanging on the wall. There's a gamepad and a bunch of pro controllers. Huh. I didn't know squids were epic gamers. What if I told you that Callie and Mary, the squid sisters, are actually squid cousins? That's what we can learn by reading the sunken scroll number 17. Well, there you go. My life is ruined. There's a bunch of rumors about Splatoon taking place in a future where humans became extinct and squids took over their place. Well, Sunken Scroll number 26 may actually contain more details proving this theory. On it, we can see a 12,000 year old fossil of a primitive creature. Hmm, sure looks like a human to me. Oh, and look, that's a Wii U gamepad, and that's a Wii U box, what the heck? Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering what this controller with a Wiimote strapped onto it actually is, well, it's a way that can be used to play the local 1v1 mode. In Battle Dojo, one controller is using the Wii U gamepad and has access to motion controls. The other player, on the other hand, is playing with a pro controller and cannot use the motion controls. Well, here's the thing. On the controller selection screen, hold down on the D-pad, press and hold B, and then push ZL and ZR. Then just strap a Wiimote to your controller and press the 2 button to activate it. There you go, you now have motion controls for player 2. It just looks completely and utterly ridiculous. The password screen can be used to protect your lobbies from unwanted people but it can also provide a great music instrument. By playing these numbers in the order shown on screen right now, you'll be able to play the Squid Sisters song. The Amiibo box in Incopolis is actually way more detailed than you might think. Even though we cannot see the back of it, if we take a look at the model, then we can see the entire box is actually detailed with the text and everything. The only difference is that the language used is not English, but the language that is used by the squids. Nintendo truly loves hiding those little useless details, don't they? In 2015, there was a free DLC added to Splatoon, which features those costumes for your Inklings. These are based off the manga and anime series Shinriyaku Ikamusume. I have no knowledge of this series, but from doing a quick Google image search, I can tell that they did a great job. A couple days before the game was officially released, there was a truck filled with copies of Splatoon and the respective amiibos that was actually hijacked 
and stolen while it was on its way to UK retailer Games Warehouse. Dang, these thieves really wanted to play Splatoon before anyone else. If you're wondering which Nintendo team actually worked on Splatoon, well, it was the Animal Crossing team. About 10 of the younger people within that team were put together and became the team that created this beloved series. Power to the youth! Let's freaking go! To promote the game to people, Nintendo had an obstacle course set up on the Santa Monica Pier where participants tried to complete it whilst getting covered in ink. There even were a couple celebrities like Ali Simpsons, James Marsden and Willow Shields. Splatoon was the first new IP created by Nintendo in 14 years when it was first launched, the last one being Pikmin back in 2001. They don't create new stuff often, but when they do, it's always a banger. Have you noticed that Kali and Mary's name is a reference to Calimari Desert from Mario Kart? Nope? Well, it's because it isn't, I just made that up. It's obviously a reference to Calimari's, which is just another word to talk about delicious squids. The Splatfests in the original Splatoon game were different depending on where you lived on the planet. For example, the first Splatfest in America was cats versus dogs, but in Japan it was actually rice versus bread, and in Europe it was rock versus pop. Interesting. One of the Splatfests that only occurred in Japan was perfect body versus perfect brain. Wow, I couldn't see that Splatfest being held in America, especially today. And hey, Nintendo, you're about to get cancelled, my dudes! In 2016, there was a concert held at Niko Niko Tokaigi, a gaming event in Japan where holograms of Kali and Mary performed their most popular songs in front of thousands of epic gamers. This must have been so cool! The first teaser trailer for Splatoon shown at E3 2014 was a bit different as defeating an enemy showed the amount of points you got from killing them while they exploded. This was actually removed in the final version. Speaking of, it was also revealed that when this trailer first dropped, the game was like 10% complete, featuring only one stage and only a couple weapons. The multiplayer stage Urkin Underpass ended up being added as a battle mode map in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch, Inkling Boy and Girl were also playable in this game. The Cooler Heads shop in the original Splatoon is run by Annie, a sea anemone, but in her hair lives Mo the Clownfish. And this dude is pretty rude, often saying mean things to the player as he browses the shop and buys stuff. Alright, that's enough. Let me see the manager! After you defeat a boss in single player, if you stand close to the edge of the map and you wait for a while, you'll hear a bunch of very eerie and creepy sounds. Yo, what is happening down there? There was a headgear that was found in the game code called the Warrior Headdress. It's a feather adorned headset based on headdresses traditionally worn by Native American tribes. The item was eventually removed in version 2.3.0, possibly to avoid controversy as it could have been seen as racist. Alright, this next one is obvious, but the N Zapper series of guns you can get are based off the Nintendo Zapper guns for the NES. Duh! Judd the Cat is always there to tell you which team won and who lost. Well, did you know that his name, Judd, is a play on the word judge? Which is exactly what this cat does after every match. He judges the winners and losers. Callie and Mary can be seen chilling in Incopolis, and if you go and stand next to the window and wait for a while, they will wave hello to the player. Aw, oh, they're so nice. Playing Splatoon in 2022 is pretty disappointing, as the player base is almost completely dead, and entering a match will take way too long. Man, the memories I had with these games are just going to be that now. Memories. <sighs> F in the chat, boys. Thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. So, what game or series should I cover next? Tell me in the comment section down below. Alright, bye!